Thank you. Uh, first off, um, thank you, Karen. She's the one that called me a month ago or so and asked me to be part of this, and I never thought I'd be standing here at a podium with my name in lights. <laughs> my God, I'm, I'm really honored because the Exploratorium Palace of Fine Arts are two of my funnest places as a kid, junior high, seeing all these things, just scientific and engineering, and it just it's a great place, and here I am uh, because of Elmer's glue and toothpicks. <laughs> um, so um, to start out, I'm going to introduce why I did this and what started it. Um, I'm going to, there's a little video on YouTube that really states what happened. In fourth grade, Sue Rathbun, a teacher, had us build these little projects, and I wanted to build the biggest one in class. So uh, a friend and I that is now an art teacher, um, we used to build things on our desks and stuff, and I tinkered at home, and I went home and built these sculptures i think i can get this activated now there's my big one that's rolling through the bay which is just in this auditorium here um i don't have the okay um you can see by the age of these photographs um this first top one is i think 1969 when i was nine years old the next one down is the first four foot one i made um just after that um and basically, it's, it's a free-form, abstract sculpture that has no rhyme or reason. Um, I love the idea that a toothpick, a general at 27 cents for a box back then, um, and Elmer's glue can bring joy to me and just make something that has no rhyme or reason. And people go, why are you, why are you building this stuff? But why not? Um, because it's an expression. This is the first one I built that actually you could kind of tell where it might roll. It was just a sculpture that has a ball that rolled through it. I saw a guy that made these little brass leaves that had a fountain and the water would tinker through these brass leaves up in Guerneville. Um, so I went home and put a ping pong ball in my sculpture and made put ping, uh, toothpicks to alter its path and went up and up and up and wanted to go bigger. And every day I'd go, Mom, I'm going to go bigger and bigger. And she's like, our house is only so big. Um, little did I know I'd make one of the world's largest, it's not, but uh, these are some of the pictures of um, my grandfather had a, a gymnasium in the 1920s on 2350 Geary. My great grandfather had a winery in the 1800s. So I made a lot of personal aspects of my life in my sculpture. Um, so I'll get to that. I made the World Series trophy to commemorate the Giants, the glove, the Coke bottle, and the mint. You'll see the ball roll down that. I also count a lot of my pieces. Um, the cable car in my large sculpture has 1,324 pieces of toothpick. The battleship has 922 pieces. So I, I've been documenting everything as I go um, so I can count, so I have some kind of proof of, of what it is. Um, for any kids in the audience, um, it can be very frustrating. Elmer's glue gets on your fingers and it, it gets tacky and you're holding a toothpick. I tell kids at seminars, do never hold two toothpicks in e each hand and try and glue it together. It won't work. I work on a flat platform or a little piece of plexiglass or wood. And once you touch and dip and touch, you let it, let it sit for 20 minutes and then come back to it. So I work on different projects at a time different walls. I'll make two squares or two circles and then hold it up with a piece of uh, anything, a household item, a Dixie cup, um, to um, just to hold something in place as the Elmer's glue dries. Um, to commemorate the Giants, Willie Mays uh, at the plaza, they put 20, 24 palm trees to for his number. I use 24 flags instead of 28 flags in the sculpture. That has 701 pieces of toothpick in it, the glove. The Coke bottle, I'm not sure. The ball rolls in it and then comes down into the plaza, of the Pac Bell Park. Every doorway is a little different. The balls roll in and out of the different driveways. There's Chinatown. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I'll be over there after this, this little uh, program and, and rolling the ball down. And there's the Palace of Fine Arts. I'm really happy that I'm here. Thank you again, Karen. Um, what intrigues me about toothpicks, and I think what has always brought me back to toothpicks is the fact that it's um, not too many do people do it for one, but also that it takes so much time. People go, why would you spend so many hours 
making this thing. And that's why I, I did it. Why not? Why are we watching TV or what have you? I spent so many hundreds of hours, even as a kid, making um, with a real deer antler, making arrowheads with leather and obsidian from Glass Mountain up out of St. Helena. Um, I love to create and use my imagination, use my hands. Not enough kids use their hands anymore. So I'm really um, honored to be part of this whole program. Um, Dale's a great guy. This is just really fun. Um, and the fact that it, the idea that it takes a long time to make a cable car out of toothpicks, it's not lucrative. People go, oh, you should quit. Why are you stacking apples at Lucky's? You should be doing this for a living. Well, no one's going to pay me $2,000, $2,500 for this hat made out of toothpicks. This is a hat. This is a small rendition to honor Beach Blanket Babylon. This is a small rendition of my large sculpture. About 10 years ago, I had an idea that, you know, since my sculptures of San Francisco and Beach Blanket Babylon has balls that roll through it, or has San Francisco hats, I got to make one that has a ball roll through it. My wife said, you're not wearing that in public. <laughs> So, uh, in fact, there's a blurb on ABC.com on, on uh, TV every, almost every day that has just a second of me wearing this hat because it was a news story, evidently. Um, so, when I make, I'm, I spend a lot of time just making parts. When I'm, um, it's, there's a lot of downtime if I, my imagination isn't working good and I just need to make supplies, I call them supplies, to make the long strands of toothpicks. There's the windmill, um, Fort Point. The long strands, say for the the, uh, the girders for the bridge, anything that's longer than the a regular strand of a toothpick. To make the line for that, I I just draw straight lines and sit and just I call it making supplies for hours. Um, I was on a treadmill for therapy, had three knee surgeries. That's the only reason I'm standing here, is because I had. It's hard to find 900 free hours in your life. And um, I had two, three knee surgeries in two years and was off work. And I, I, I built, I framed a drafting table around my stationary bike and set up lights so I could pedal and make supplies. <laughs> because I told my wife and my neighbors, I'm going to finish my toothpick sculpture. So I'm, uh, this has been a dream of mine, of mine for my whole life since I was nine to make the world's largest. It's not, but it's... it's uh, it's close. It might be the world's largest functioning, but um, it doesn't matter to be the world's largest. It's just an abstract sculpture of San Francisco that has a function. And uh, I hope you all come out and enjoy it. Um, any questions? Oh, yes. Should I go back? I don't have the world record. There's two or three people that are larger than mine but none of them have a function or a kinetic yeah. aspect. So but this is the main tour, rolling through the bay. The title, the biplane, the little propeller works. It spirals down 10 times, and then it goes underneath the rice -a cable car behind my great-grandfather had a winery saloon, the Lourdes Cellar. Goes through the Transamerica building, has my face, goes out at the 1929 Cliff House. They're now going down Lombard Street, start, starting right here to here. Little street sign says Grant and Lombard. Grant Avenue is Chinatown. A little dragon here. They turn and go back towards the Palace of Fine Arts, where we're at, which I absolutely am happy about. <laughs> that has my heart inside that I left in San Francisco. Tony Bennett would be proud. The balls roll out around the windmill out at Ocean Beach. Um, go by the pay toll at the toll booth. It has the time our son was born. Goes across the Golden Gate Bridge. Goes over Humphrey the Whale as he's splashing goodbye to us, thanking us for helping him get out of San Francisco Bay to go home. Goes behind Alcatraz Island uh, by the uh, uh, Maritime Museum at Aquatic Park, ending in Flyshacker Pool down here at Ghirardelli Square. <laughs> awesome. The um, Oak, the East Bay Tour, <laughs> winds around up here. Drops down underneath the Rice Verona cable car, depending on if I altered its path. Now that I, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just alter that so that doesn't happen anymore. It, it goes, the centrifugal force brings it past that little hole 
and it comes back oh, through. Nice. <laughs> and then it comes out, and I did alter this. We'll see if this is going to be a problem. Uh, that's why I want to work on this. It goes out around the Oakland Bay Bridge. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Look. <laughs> and then it drops down into the uh, Embarcadero by the World Series trophy. <laughs> drops down into, this is a first, drops oh. into the Coke bottle around the mitt, and then into, I need to work on that, in, into Packbell Park, coming down by the sailboat, goes into the ferry building clock tower that has the time I was born, oh. the time my wife was born, the time my mother was born, and then they go by the two little escaping crabs here at Fisherman's Wharf, ending it in a little clamshell. I've probably put a little over 100 hours into it. Because I worked 40 hours, but I made the world. I had to make the World Series trophy, the Coke bottle, the mitt, the whole Pac Bell Park. And instead of commemorating the 24, I think they put 24 palm trees to honor Willie Mays near his sculpture. I put 24 flags on the World Series trophy. And then the the Powell Street cable car tours. One of the balls goes down the 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 uh, Castro di district rainbow colored toothpicks of the Castro <laughs> on one of the tours they um, the balls roll through the interior of the homes inspecting uh, inspecting oh for any God. code violations <laughs> <laughs> and then the other ones go in and out of every driveway that's, oh that's my crazy. God. That is beautiful. and in that's every that's every so cool. every doorway <laughs> has a little something different and then the balls take a quick trip on BART. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, they already went on BART. And then there's the Mount Tam tour. There's two of them, actually. They wind through the redwoods of Mount Tam, and they go uh, past the magic mushrooms of uh, the Haight-Ashbury up there. <laughs> and they, because this is the natural tour, it gets on John F. Kennedy Drive and comes down here into Golden Gate Park by the old de young museum and those weird looking little plants that are, don't look like toothpicks are actually what moroccans use for um toothpicks then th this this tour goes through the center of the windmill instead of around it dropping down in by the missouri battleship goes by the ferris wheel out of playland at the fun house and goes just underneath the nose of his surfboard as he's shooting the tube <laughs> giving a peace sign So I might detour no, people. Oh, nice, don't mate. do that. Good job. What? <laughs> that was perfect. Down Lombard. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. We'll catch you back here. Thank, Thank you. you very much.